in the last video we were talking about doping and dopants in uh, in uh, semiconductors and we saw that if you have a silicon lattice and if you replace one of these uh, silicon atoms with let's say a group uh, a group uh, 5 element so if you replace it by phosphorus you have five electrons in the valence shell of your phosphorus because it belongs to the column five or group five uh, uh, column in your in your periodic table so it has five valence electrons and it gives away this valence electron and uh, it acts as a donor where this phosphor atom has a positive charge and it gives away this extra electron to the lattice similarly if we add or if we replace one of these uh, silicon atoms with a boron or which lies in the in the column 3 or group 3 uh, of my of my of my periodic table then i have only three valence uh, shell electrons and these uh, bore each of these boron atoms it absorbs the extra electron uh, from the lattice and it becomes negatively charged and in return it creates this one vacancy in the lattice which is we call as hole or the positively charged hole which also is free to move around in the lattice so we know that common dopants uh, for uh, for silicon or group uh, uh, four elements if you want to have donors we go on the right hand side of the periodic table and some of the common donors include uh, phosphorus arsenic antimony and if you want to have an acceptor we go towards the towards the left hand side of the periodic table so we have elements like boron which is a common acceptor in silicon but now i want to talk about in this video is what i want to talk about in this video is what are the common dopants in compound semiconductor or a semiconductor which is made up of group 3 and group 5 elements so let me draw you know gallium arsenide which is one such semiconductor so in a gallium arsenide lattice this is how the atoms are arranged each of these gallium is bonded to an arsenic atom which is in return bonded to a gallium atom so you know this this would be how this this would look like also keep in mind that this uh, 2d projection that i'm drawing over here this is for illustration purpose only to explain this concept in reality these these atoms you know they form a fcc kind of a lattice where arranged in a 3d fashion but let's see you know what what so what should i replace this gallium or arsenic atom to give me a donor or you know give me an extra electron or give me a hole so if i think about it you know if i'm if i'm forming a, if i'm forming a compound between my 3 5 semiconductors i'm i'm you know i'm here in my periodic table so for example here i have shown you gallium which is bonded with arsenic to form gallium arsenide similarly a compound is gallium when bonded with antimony forms a uh, gallium antimonide so gallium arsenide is one such compound compound semiconductor gallium antimonide is another one then you know this indium can also bond with uh, indium arsenide this indium can also bond with phosphorus and you know they they'll give indium arsenic indium phosphide so th there there are quite a few compound semiconductors you can get by combining elements in group 3 and group 5 uh, columns of your periodic table so now if i think about what should i replace it with to give me a uh, extra electron so if i want to obtain an extra electron maybe i should go here in the periodic table i should go even right from group 5 so if i if i replace any of these gallium atoms with uh, let's say uh, if i replace this with sulfur or even if i replace this with uh, my arsenic atom with sulfur sulfur my arsenic atom only had 5 5 valence shell electron my gallium atom had 3 valence shell electron if i replace it with sulfur i have 6 of these valence shell electrons per per atom and so this can act as a good it can act possibly as a good uh, donor in my group uh, gro in my 3 5 semiconductor similarly if i want to have a acceptor maybe i should go even left from my from my column 3 for example if i if i take zinc and uh, replace my gallium with zinc or replace my arsenic with zinc so zinc only has two valence shell electron uh, per atom which is less than what ga even gallium had which had 3 and uh, which arsenic had which had 5 so it can act as a good acceptor so 
for example if i grow in group 2 or if i grow if i go in group 6 i can find some options for acceptors in my 35 semiconductor if i if i look in group Two, or if I look in column two of my periodic table. Similarly, I can find some options for donors if I look in if I look in group six of my periodic table. Now let's let me ask you another question. Let's think about what would happen if I introduce silicon in my gallium arsenide lattice. And this is this is this is pretty interesting. So play cause play pay. Let me you know have your attention for a few minutes. So let me re redraw this, redraw this lattice let me clean up this mess i've made over here so i have this i've recovered my lattice over here so i have this this uh, gallium arsenide lattice and what happens if i add silicon to it so the question to ask about is where does this silicon go does it replace a gallium atom or does it replace a arsenic atom and why is that important the reason why it's important is that i have a 3-5 semiconductor so i have a 3-5 semiconductor and my gallium atom is contributing three electrons and my arsenic atom is contributing five electrons to this lattice overall you know they combine and uh, all these electrons they uh, on an average you have three plus five are uh, divided by two which is on an average you still have four valence uh, electrons per atom in the lattice which is the same as the case of silicon where also each atom it contributes uh, four electrons but now in the case of uh, three five semiconductor when i'm replacing this replacing this uh, uh, gallium or arsenic uh, with the uh, silicon so if i'm replacing this gallium with silicon i'm adding so my silicon which has four electrons i'm adding one more electron to the lattice but in the case of if i'm replacing my arsenic with silicon i'm i'm doing i'm subtracting one electron from my lattice so it would depend upon whether silicon acts as a donor or acceptor would depend upon what atom does it replaces and actually it's a little more complicated than this but in general group 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 four elements they would act as amphoteric dopants what it means is that they can either act as donor or they can act as acceptors uh, in a in a 3-5 semiconductor 